This is Bimbo News. With your hosts, Allie Siegel, Melissa Stegman. Hello and welcome to Webcrawler's Bimbo News. I'm Allie Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. This is a podcast where we'll cover everything from viral news stories to pop culture to things that we watched on TV during the week. We have a Patreon. Our true crime episodes are now only available at patreon.com slash webcrawlers for a meager Five dollars a month meager. with a meager with producer Maria, and we mm-hmm. will be doing spooky episodes for all of October. And maybe we'll plan even like I don't know a seance or something cool. We should get Ooh. we should get what's up weirdo on the horn Ooh, and see what they're up and to. Jessica, yeah, they've really been popping off. They're all over the place. They're they're so good. They're just very good. At they're podcasting. good at what they do. Yeah, yeah, they're the top of their game. They're hosting stuff. They're they're, they're doing good. movie openings. They're you know what? If you want some experts. <laughs> Get, get go over there. <laughs> they're very good at their job. Yeah, they're we're good. They're like, good at their job. Yeah, <sighs> we're tired. We, yeah, we're tired. Um, <laughs> uh, also, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Talk about if you like entertainment news. If you want to know about, you know, a woman who was blind her whole life and then hit her head on a table and now she can see again. What? Or if you want to know about Al Pacino's penis injury. Then, oh, or I you do want to know about it though. Leave Schreiber breaking a jar of pasta sauce at Whole Foods. No, I and guys, <laughs> this is the podcast for you. And you've got to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, please. Please. Or, or uh, call into our hotline. And then maybe one day we will regale you with we will a... D- we will do an episode a before the end episode. of the year. We'll yeah, do before the end of the year. Episode. When you least expect when it. When you least expect it. You'll get a notification and say, wow. Because that's wow. it's like it will be like a present that way. Yeah. The number surprise. is... Six to six, sixty-three. For 2069. Nice. Melissa, who are our patrons? We have Jennifer C, Lindsay, Megan B, Carmel, Sarah, and Kylie H. Welcome, Welcome. to the team, folks. We are happy to have you. This week in Weird, let's get into it. Melissa, what's going on? Well, there was a a, a pet that was lost for uh oh. 30 years. What kind of pet? It was found alive in the owner's attic. <laughs> what do you what what do you think? What kind of pet could live for 30 years? Oh, that's a good point. It was it a snake? It's it like a boa constrictor or something? No. Uh sim well, I wouldn't say similar, but like uh, uh, <sighs> bird. Bird. Cockatoo. Nope. Bearded dragon. Getting closer. Iguana? No. Fish. No. <laughs> it was a turtle. Oh, of course it was. For 30 years. That poor guy. What was it so, eating? Well, uh, so apparently the turtle's name is Manuela. Um, they thought the, the turtle like escaped and got out. And they're like, man, this turtle, we ha- it, it's gone. And then yeah. they went up in the attic to like clean out some stuff. And they saw Manuela in an old wooden speaker box, alive and well. That's insane. And it so tortoises can actually go. Sorry, it was a tortoise, not a turtle. Uh, what is even the difference? Is the real question. There it's. So anyway, tortoises can actually go between six months and three years without food. Oh, skinny legend. They think it survived on termite larva. Oof. There wasn't any water around, so they think she got her moisture intake from insects. Oh, my God. Yeah. This poor turtle. But then they took the turtle into the, the vet and discovered that she is actually a male. So now uh-huh. her name is Manuel. <laughs> so many layers to this story. Turtle tur- Tortoises can live to be 255 years old. Do you know that? I feel like I did it's know crazy. that. It's crazy. That's really bananas. Mm-hmm. Also, what an interesting pet. Someone in my neighborhood has a tortoise and they take it for walks. Yeah. 
I, I mean, like, I don't know anyone personally, but you hear, you know, every once in a while you hear about someone having a turtle yeah. or a tortoise. And this turtle in my neighborhood knows its way around the neighborhood. Like the turtle will go out on a walk, go around the neighborhood, then it'll walk, go back up into its driveway. Our tortoises. Like they smart. know the route. It's crazy. His name is Marcel. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Tortoises are very intelligent. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. like you just said, they mm-hmm. it says they have been known to navigate mazes with surprising accuracy. Yeah, yeah, they're smart. They have amazing long-term memory. It says emotional mm-hmm. intelligence, cognitive abilities, and train abilities. Train ability. Mm-hmm. They have train abilities. They can drive They have train, train ability. <laughs> and they are excellent train conductors. conductors. <laughs> I bet they would be because they know routes yeah. so well. And they could do the same they the same route taxis. for 250 years. Um, well, I'm glad Marcel is safe. Uh, not Marcel. Manuel, Manuel. is safe. Uh, yeah. Congratulations to Congrats. Manuel for living his most authentic life. Now, next, uh, more pet news, actually. There is something called uh, Running of the Wieners. <laughs> and it is in Oktoberfest in Ohio, of course. It is where dozens of dachshunds, you know, the wiener dogs, get Uh dressed up as hot dogs and they compete in something called running of the wieners. Love Uh, it. Yeah, there's video of it all over. There is also in New York um, the annual pet parade for Halloween. They just had that. There's some great, great photos Uh on if you follow New York Nico on Instagram, there's some great photos there that he put up of the pet parade. It's really awesome. Mm-hmm. So if you like yes. dogs in costumes or pets in costumes, I do. This is your this is your month to This thrive. is your month, baby. Pets and babies in costumes are like love they it. They really do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> Another article I found which piqued my interest. <laughs> Because I love a get rich quick scheme. Sorry. Love it. Yeah. Is I saw on Instagram this man. He is a quote unquote do nothing friend. He rents himself out as a friend to lonely people in Japan. He's this Japanese man and he makes $80,000 a year. Wow. Yeah. So there's obviously like a loneliness epidemic which is horrific, especially since COVID and quarantine. I I was actually watching a great documentary this morning on Netflix called Join or Die. And it's about the importance of joining clubs and social Mm -hmm. activity and community engagement and how those things are very important, not only to your physical health, but also to the civic and like political health of a nation Mm -hmm. because the importance of joining a club or being part of your community also creates a sense of civic and community responsibility Mm -hmm. that you are somehow tied to your neighbor or responsible for your neighbor. And then the more isolated you are, the less responsible you feel for your community or your neighbor, which creates this civic divide that we are seeing now in our community because also there's studies that like people who have more friends or more social live longer oh yeah it's it's like 50 percent or something uh crazy yeah it's really it's really integral which makes i mean i am incredibly introverted and incredibly Mm -hmm. insular the only club and i won't say what club it is but i i (laughs) i am part of a club club. but i i you know i i have group therapy and you know i'm in i'm in a recovery group and that in it in itself is you know a a club of people that i'm a part of as long as you're like talking to other people you know right um and it is it is mentioned that even a talk with your grocery bagger or your barista or someone Mm -hmm. in your community Mm -hmm. that is friendly and sociable is as uh important as having like a close-knit group of friends as long as it's somewhat social and friendly but it made me think like i want to start some sort of club i mean we're both in a book club but i've never been it made me want to be like okay i should start going to the book club oh yeah even if you don't sometimes people come who like don't read the book just like hang out and we talk maybe like 10 percent of the book of the book and then it's like the rest is like reality tv 
So it's well, great. I'll chip in on that part. But it it's really like a fun ladies club. Yeah, it really <laughs> made me think about the importance of clubs. Mm-hmm. And also the I mean, I'm going so off topic right now. But the history of clubs and volunteering, and how mm-hmm. volunteering is also down because historically, clubs like maybe you'd have a bowling club or a knitting club and historically those clubs would maybe once a month go out into the community and feed the homeless or volunteer at a shelter together or something like that and now that clubs are down volunteering is down also um so people Mm -hmm. aren't actually like out in the field as much getting right knowing what's actually going on in their community Anyways, that being said, so now there's this guy who makes like $80,000 a year just charging to be people's friend. Um, Wow. So uh, 100, I guess he charges like $100 an hour and he books for like two to three hours and people will just get lunch with him or maybe see a movie or just go to the park and sit around. Uh, He it's something called uh, in Japan. Hikomori syndrome, an extreme form of social withdrawal due to chronic loneliness. And I was thinking, can women be rent of friends or is that with that dangerous territory? That's interesting. (laughs) I would think women could be friends to other women. Right. I think that would be safe. But yeah, this guy. Yeah, it's interesting. Because I was like, I don't think I could do that job. I don't think I could if put up. If you're a I, woman, it would be, I feel like it would be looked at differently. Yeah, I think people know? would say you're escorting. Even if I said, no, I just want to go to a movie. I'll just go to a movie with you and take a walk in the park. People would, it would be skewed differently somehow. Yeah. Anyways. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, but good. that's crazy that this guy makes that much I know. Money. I was like, fuck. That would be beneficial to me, too, if I could rent a friend. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if I could it's be a rent like a, a friend. therapist, I guess. Right. Which is, I sort guess, of. the route that I'll have to go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> damn, women can only be be therapists while men can uh-huh. just do rent a friend. They not, can do whatever they, they fucking want. They can do want. whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> um, in other news, I read that a woman who had been blind since age 11 regained her eyesight after hitting her head on a coffee table (laughs) what yeah so she went down (laughs) i i don't know why this i hadn't read this part until just now so she this woman named lisa reed who is blind she knelt down to kiss her guide dog good night and she hit her head on the table and then suddenly was able to see, I guess. Oh, my God. Yeah. She had a tumor that was pressing down on her optic nerve. And I guess when she bonked her head, it somehow, I don't know, adjusted the tumor Whoa. or adjusted the nerve. And then she woke up able to see. <gasps> so no. if I was a doctor, that would be the first thing I'd start suggesting to people. Just bonk your head. Yeah, I'd be like, have you thought of hitting your head on have the table? Have you thought of hitting your head? That's crazy. I Can mean, you I guess yeah, if it was on like a nerve or something or yeah. blocking something. Fascinating. Can you imagine? Wow. I'd be like this whole time. All I had to do was just bonk all my I had head. To do was, I'd be so mad. I'd be so pissed. Are you kidding me? I can <laughs> yeah. see and everything. I know. I'd be like, fuck, why didn't I, I bonk watch, anything? I got so much TV to catch up on now. <laughs> so that is the one good oh. thing. So much TV to catch up oh. on. Right as we're talking about the loneliness epidemic, we're like, you got to hunker down on the couch and catch up. There's so much Survivor you need yeah, to watch. You've missed so much. <laughs> I can't even begin to explain how TV you've missed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what uh, else is going on? I saw that the uh, the first woman who is going to the moon will be wearing a Prada space suit. Oh, yes, queen, serve. <laughs> yes, queen, serve. I don't, I think it's going to happen in 2026, maybe. Oh. But I thought that was very... Uh, Yes, queen. Yeah. Is you the wear man Prada space? Suit yeah, is, and, is the yes. man wearing Prada too? I believe well, I think Prada is is designing the the spacesuits for the next team that goes up there. That's really interesting. <laughs> sure. Do they I always guess. have like 
designers? designer collab? I don't think so. I guess I don't know enough about the space suit. I don't like, either. Interesting. I just thought that was funny. Another thing I that that is funny: <laughs> these Bed Bath and Beyond candles. They're so. How do you, for like whether it's Zara or Bed Bath and Beyond? How do all these companies keep doing this? I don't know. These, if you haven't seen these Bed Bath and Beyond candles, they have what what kind of design is? It looks like. It's called snowed in is the the yeah. scent of it. And it's like a snowflake cut out of paper. Yeah, it's supposed to be a snowflake. But the design looks like a bunch of white hooded people with like the eyes cut out. Yeah, they look like Klansmen. It looks like a bunch of Klansmen yeah, holding it looks hands. Like Klansmen. <laughs> it's horrible. So they um they apologized. Uh they've removed the candles. Uh <laughs> from the store this way they you had need more diversity uh, in their marketing team and yeah. creation teams the scent was buttermilk musk and vanilla that does sound kind of I mean, good though that's, that's yeah. good. <laughs> but they have removed the candles they're like oops <laughs> whoopsies that's like remember when zara did literally like holocaust t-shirts or something they were like oh striped God. with yellow stars Oh my god! And everyone yes. was said, um, "How does that get through?" I don't know. I don't know this story. It's kind of a long story, but this is in Vice mm. uh, from September. Apparently, this musician was using AI songs, uploaded them to Spotify, was making millions of dollars in royalties, and got bots to like listen to the music. So it was like AI Shut all over up. the place. And he scammed Spotify into making millions of dollars. This guy named Michael Smith, 52 from North Carolina. 52? That's kind of surprising. Yeah. yeah. And he put his music on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. He had an army of bots listening to the music. And he wow. got over $10 million in streaming royalties. They must have listened to, the bots must have lis been listening 24-7 multiple I, times. Yeah. Because I feel like, like you get 0 0.01 yeah. cent a listen Musicians famously barely make any money from streaming. Yeah. Uh, wow. But he's been indicted for, the FBI says, fraud. He's been charged with wire fraud, conspiracy, money laundering. I mean... That's just smart. Yeah, I was going to say, like, what's illegal unless there's something What is in... illegal about? I get, well, I, there's probably some sort of, like, clause on Spotify where you have to be the creator. Right. I guess. I don't know. But also, He's been if doing you it since 2018. Created it on AI. Like, I don't... I, right. I don't know. It's confusing. I don't know. I think... His band names were Calm Identity... Zygotic wash stands. I mean, I feel like stuff like that happens on YouTube constantly where people will just yes. take public domain yes. music and then, you know, turn it into a meditation station, you know. He or had billions of streams. That's wild. I mean, that's just smart. I think he should be free i don't think i i hope he wins yeah justice yeah for this guy i i hope he gets a really great lawyer and that i hope mm -hmm. that he wins against spotify because that's like on them dude that's on them dude dude <laughs> so this story yeah. was surprisingly not about Alex. Yeah, surprisingly not about my backyard which i found another raccoon hole this morning oh i'll no. show you a photo it keeps. Oh, no. It, I don't know if you can see it. Hold on. I'll, I'll. Oh, in your yard. Yeah. It keeps digging raccoon holes from the neighbor's yard next to me into my yard under my fence. That I don't know if it's a raccoon or a skunk or whatever. Skunks it is. do that. Skunks did that in my yard where they would dig underneath the fence. That's why I kept putting cinder blocks there. That's what I did. They just put cement on ha uh, on the pa on the other holes That's to patch it. To and now it's dug another hole this morning, a huge Ooh. hole. And I have to keep patching them because then Asher can get into the neighbor's yard, which is like what I'm actually worried about. But God, this oh, fucking yeah. skunk is ruining my 
life. Skunks are crazy. We had to get, I kept putting cinder blocks there and putting rocks and stones. They would keep digging further underneath. So we just had to get, we had to get like a fencing guy to put like dig down two feet and put fence underneath. I'm going to have to end up doing that because the trapper. It was crazy. We had pest control here and the trapper was like, listen, I made it so they can't get under your porch anymore because they were like living under my porch sometimes. He was like, but I can't, there's nothing I can do other than that, other than like, do your entire fence for your yard, which is going to be like a bajillion dollars. But God fucking. Okay. So what happened to this lady? So this lady, (laughs) she had been uh, feeding the raccoons, (laughs) which starts out innocent. And then all of a sudden, all the raccoons. (laughs) So she had like, I think 50 to 100 raccoons were in her yard in Washington state. And she called 911. (laughs) That's what I would do. Help me. And she said they're becoming more aggressive, demanding food. They would scratch at the outside of her house at the door. And if she pulled up in her car, they would surround the car, (laughs) scratch the car. Just hundreds of raccoons. You give one raccoon a granola bar and then all of a sudden it brings the whole fam to the cookout. That's what happened when I was feeding like some feral cats. Like I got like three to four cats, but like the raccoons and the skunks started showing up. I was like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, no, thank you. you. It's bad news. This story. Nasty ass. (laughs) Yeah, no, thank you. Nasty ass. You got to see this. It's a... A robot gets a face of living skin it's that allows so it fucked. to smile. It is so fucked up. It's a it's a robot. I, it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like a circle of a robot that smiles. And it's just like a pink circle with like eyeballs. And it's like smiling. It's really disgusting. I can't. I don't know how to explain it. It's disgusting. I don't think robots need skin. No. I think that's when it starts to get dangerous. Smile too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you watch it? I did. How was it? It's fucking, it was great. It was oh, it really is? Great. I oh, lo- I great. I loved the first one. Yeah. I thought the first one was very good. I think this one is even better. Oh, that's really surprising. I couldn't tell from the preview. Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Yep. What else is going on? Speaking of robot skin, <laughs> meat, people ate bear meat mm. and got sick. Yeah, don't do that. Who was it? RFK? This, no. <laughs> this was a uh, rare bear meat at gathering gives 10 people a scare and parasitic worms. Uh, and it was rare. They're eating it rare. First of all, don't eat it, period. Second of all, why are you eating it rare? I don't know what happened. It, they, what, it was in North Carolina. They ate rare bear meat. Uh, November 23rd last year at a gathering, 22 people ate the meat, 10 developed symptoms of worm infection. It was the roundworm, trichinella. No, no, thank you. Ew, they got worms and facial swelling. Oh, yeah. I One person d- developed don't. flu-like symptoms. Yeah, oh. that doesn't surprise me. If you're eating a rare bear meat, that's disgusting. Don't do that. Why what kind you... of gathering was it? Uh, Anti bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gather. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. Ugh. Ugh. Thousands of bears are harvested in the state each year, North Carolina. Is that a thing that people do? I did not know that people were eating bear. Well, I guess, I mean, literally RFK was taking that bear cub to eat. Oh. And he had brain worms. He did have brain worms. Is that how he got it? I don't know. Probably. I bet that's how he got it. Ew. Uh, Can't eat Speaking of barfing. Days. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 18 people were treated for severe nausea at a um, opera. Where live sex and piercing? What is going on? What kind of opera was this? Uh, Stuttgart's opera, German. Uh, yes. Okay. And there, the performance included live piercing, 
unsimulated sexual intercourse and copious amounts of fake and real blood. <laughs> they had eight. On Saturday, there's eight people. Sunday, 10 people had to be looked after by our visitor service. Ew. It was an Aus- oh, the Austrian choreographer. It's too much for them. Wow. Too much art. This is an all-female cast. They typically perform partially or fully naked, and previous shows have included live sword swallowing, tattooing, masturbation, and action (laughs) paintings with blood and fresh excrement. If you're going to this show, you you know. You should know what you're getting yourself into. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't. Those Austrians. Yeah, I mean, that's hard, some hardcore stuff. They know how to party. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of what I would expect from some, like, German modern art opera stuff. Austrian, whatever. Uh, and then what? Uh, oh, so I thought this is very funny. A woman applied for a job, and then 48 years later, she gets a reply. <laughs> oh, my God, that's really funny. The job market, am I right? Seriously. Uh, this woman... Spent Did she get it? Years. <laughs> well, we're, bo- we're about to find out. <laughs> she was wondering why an application for her dream job was never answered, and she finally found out why. Uh, Tizzy Hodson, she's from Lincolnshire. She's 70. Uh, she opened her mail, and she- it was an original letter she sent applying for a job as a motorcycle stunt rider. What? <laughs> Sent in January 1976, had been stuck behind a post office drawer all these years. Oh, no. Oh, no. But despite oh. getting lost in the post, it did not hamper her daredevil career. As oh, she good. found another job that took her all over the world. Oh, okay, thank God. Okay, stunts. good. That would be so sad if, like, her whole that was life the reason. detoured. Yeah, like she like Ugh. never got to do her dream job and like just worked as a waitress or something her entire life because this thing was stuck behind a mailbox. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> she eventually moved to Africa. She worked as a snake handler and a horse oh my God. whisperer, learned to fly and became an aerobatic pilot and flying instructor. Wow. She did the opera in Austria. She did. She's apparently the choreographer of an opera in Austria. Yeah. Wow. That's so wild. That's funny. Crazy. Well, for True Crime Corner, I watched the uh, Impact documentary on the Menendez brothers because oh. I had said I had watched the, the uh, Ryan, Ryan Murphy, Murphy one. And I was like, I don't remember anything about oh, boy. the actual trial. So I don't know where I stand mm-hmm. on this. And where I stand is free the Menendez brothers. They yeah. should be free. Because looking back, uh, first of all, I'll say Rosie O'Donnell, I think, is a silent, um, really good person. I think she does a lot for people that we don't know. And she might be my new Dolly Parton. Wow. Because in this in this documentary, it she's cited as friends of the Menendez brothers. And I was like, what? And so while this trial was going on, it was very popular to make fun of these boys sure. and or th- these men. Um, and I also did not realize how much in the trial it was like men cannot be molested or raped because oh. they do not. It, 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 the whole thing was they can't be molested or raped because they don't have the equipment to be molested or raped oh, i had no idea was, that's what 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 was said at the trial yes it was oh, very ske- it was very skewed and it was also like and if they are molested or raped like then they are gay or they enjoy it like wow. it was very homophobic and Jesus. the whole lens yeah it was like looking through it it was crazy also their whole entire family their their dad's um whole family thinks that the dad did it like the dad molested them the dad's sister has been a huge proponent on uh trying to free the boys and like this is like her brother was killed by these kids and she's like they should be freed like i think he did all this they should be freed also i did not realize that the dad also had molestation accusa- accusations against uh, from one of the kids in that band Menudo. Um, 
Oh. One of the boys from that band also alleged that uh, Jose Menendez had molested him. What the So there hell? was various molestation accusations against um, this guy. And then also uh, the boys had told various people through time that their dad was molesting them. And it That's was... Crazy. Yeah, it wasn't... This wasn't something that was like made up. Like various people as as a ploy to get them off like various people uh said on the stand like no they told me when they were 11 years old or 8 years old that the dad was Jesus. doing this and i told the mom and the mom didn't do anything like it and so the whole, it was skewed i don't know it was skewed really crazy so anyways let us know what you think but i am like free the menendez brothers anyways what i was saying about rosie o'donnell sorry i'm all over the place um, wait what was the reason they gave as to why like why did the Pro- the prosecutors say they killed their parents like, ju- like just because they didn't like yeah they them? they basically they said it was just because for the money for the will they said the whole molestation thing was fake slash like men can't be molested and if they oh, are they like enjoy it kill your parents for no for month like that's just not a thing that people do right i don't it, it's i mean it's sure the, there's crazy people in the world that kill their parents but like right that seemed, there had to have and been something life is a wild sentence for yeah. for that um you know regardless it's it, and they apparently have done amazing things inside the prison Whoa. in terms of reforming the prison. But uh, apparently Rosie O'Donnell was molested as a child. And watching this, w- and when she was watching the trial, um, was really moved by it and has become a huge proponent for the Menendez brothers since they've been incarcerated. Whoa. And like talks with them and visits them and has silently been trying to like get them out of prison and be there for them this entire time. Damn. So I think that was just, I don't know. That was just really interesting for yeah. me too um, here. So anyways, uh, my take is that, and it's being re not retried, but re-looked at. Oh yeah, I guess, they're but, looking at it again. Yeah, so. Ooh, Kim Kardashian wrote something. I know, yeah. She's like free the yeah. open letter to um, them or something. So that is, I guess, a plus of this Ryan Murphy doc coming, or sure. TV show coming out, is now it's brought more attention and they're relooking yeah. at the case. So um, Interesting. what's up with this California piss bandit? <laughs> so there's this this guy. Well, they don't know if it's a guy. There's someone named the piss bandit. Who has been leaving big bottles of pee around Pasadena? Uh oh! And two guys on TikTok have been documenting this thing. They leave these big bottles of pee on top of a utility box on like the same what? street for years. For years, there's just always bottles of pee up there, and. Sometimes they have things written on the side of it. Like sometimes it says human urine with like smiley faces written on the side of it. That's so weird. So these two guys on TikTok, they put up hidden cameras to try to see who was leaving the pee. And one of them caught a masked man dropping off bottles overnight. And then they... They ended up like leaving. They wrote something like a a note that was like, hey, we want to speak to you about why you're doing this. And here's how to reach out to us. And then like the note was gone and they had another camera there that the guy stole. So they took their hidden camera. But it has stopped apparently after they ran out of piss. Yeah. What? But it's been going on for years. I know it's strange. I wonder if someone has a pee fetish and it's like their drop off point. I wonder, <laughs> like if someone's like Venmoing someone for piss and is like drop drop off the piss here. Oh, well, what they did, someone, I guess, like the city of Pasadena, put like some sort of like thing on top, so you can't set <laughs> stuff on. And apparently, they would just put That's the pee like next to it. 
<laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah. That is so weird. Anyway, look out for that piss bandit in Yeah, uh, watch out for the piss bandit. Pasadena. Uh, Pasadena um, piss bandit. This so this I remember reading this story like three years ago. This like father like took his children in New Zealand and just like went off into the woods and like was not oh seen. God. But apparently they were captured on video, this guy and his three kids walking through the forest. Oh, my God. Yeah. So just before Christmas 2021, Tom Phillips fled into the wilderness with his children uh, who were eight, nine and 11 after he got into a fight with their mom. And he had not been seen since last November after they stole a quad bike they broke into a shop, and, but they were last. They were seen together last Thursday on some farmland in New Zealand, and yeah, that's they, crazy. But they haven't been able to find them again. So these kids took a video of them. They were with some. It was some teenage pig hunters, and they pulled out their phones and started like taking video of them. God, so they're just like living in the wilderness yeah. or something? That's very it's crazy. It's crazy. It's been like three years and they like haven't been able to find them. We got to get David Ferrier on the case. Oh, Ferrier. yeah. I wonder yeah. if he knows them. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. What else is going on in true crime? Oh, this man <laughs> broke into a house and he cleaned it. Oh my God, can he break into my house? I know. <laughs> this uh, woman was forced to flee home after a stranger breaks in, but he cleans the floor and he took out the trash. Oh my God, that's like my he, dream. He did some housework and he drank some wine. <laughs> this was in the UK. Uh, rearranged some items, emptied the trash bins, even cooked a meal for himself. That is so weird. Yeah. That's like she was at work. And, OCD uh, bandit. Yeah. Her laundry was hung up to dry. What? Bird feeders were refilled. Groceries were put away. <laughs> there was a That's note left. Bananas. What said, the note say? Don't worry. Be happy. Eat up and scratch. I kind of love that. Yeah. That's like. I don't know. It feels like a random act of kindness. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe he had just been stalking this lady or it's like she's oh. kind of has it hard. Mm -hmm. You know, she she hasn't been able to go grocery shopping. She seems tired. The house is kind of messy. I'm going to break in and do everything for her. <laughs> That's so fair. Oh, he was later arrested for another burglary. In oh. that instance, he washed his clothes and consumed the owner's food. Oh. He was sentenced to 22 months in prison. It seems maybe like he's just an unhoused guy who needs a place to go sometimes and then maybe also like wants to like, leave the place yeah. better than he found it. Though. Yeah. He was taught to leave places better than he yeah. found them. I don't know. I kind of feel bad for this guy. Let's get this guy a job. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It seems nice. I don't, hit, hit us up. Hit us up. I don't know. <laughs> hit us up. Andrew. Uh, give you some work. Yeah. In entertainment news, some sad news. Oh, Liam Payne. Liam Payne of One Direction has died. I yeah, shocking. Did you ever listen to One Direction? I did not. I think that was a little too too yeah, young. I think we're a little for, too old. Uh, yeah, but they yeah. were they were like the first big group from. Uh, what's Simon Cowell's shows? America's Got yeah. Talent or whatever that show is. Right. Was it X Factor? America's Got Talent or it's something? One of those things. Britain's Got Talent. And oh, yeah, it's like probably huge. not. It's not America's Got Talent. Yeah. Yeah. America's Got Talent. Yeah. They're all yeah, British. America. Yeah. They're all British. The they famous really British show. But they broke yeah. up because like Harry Styles is when solo. Yeah. I don't know who else is. Liam has a brother. Lewis. Right. I don't think that they're <laughs> brothers. <laughs> I don't right? know. Aren't they brothers? I don't think Liam and Lewis are brothers. Hold on. What am I thinking of? Liam I think Payne. They're just oh, mates. Harry Styles, Zayn. Who Zayn was married to Gigi Hadid, right? Or they have yes, a baby? Yes, they have a baby. Oh, Lewis Tomlinson and Yeah, I don't Neil think any of them are brothers. Horn. Oh, I thought they were brothers. No, I that's don't know. Mumford and Sons. That's <laughs> where they're all secretly related. Yeah. 
But yeah, yeah very sad. sad. Died in yeah. a hotel room. Controversial, yeah. Yeah. Sad. Mm-hmm. Um, chicken shop date. Did you oh, watch yeah. the chicken shop date with Amelia and Andrew Garfield? I did not, but I like that girl. I like her. I th- I actually she do like interviews. her. Yeah. I think she's cute and I think she's funny. Yeah. She and Andrew Garfield. Uh-oh. I honestly think that they're secretly dating and that they they film this pretending oh. that they're not dating. Their chemistry is wow. banana town. It so they've they went viral because she was doing like red carpet interviews mm-hmm. and they had like crazy chemistry on their red carpet interview where they first met the first time and then they ran into each other a second time on a red carpet and the chemistry was just as bonkers wow and i guess that uh they he would not go on chicken shop date for like two years because the chemistry was just too intense and what that's why he he, didn't go on the show yeah and he also had a girlfriend a secret girlfriend and they just broke up though very recently broke up and now he's on chicken shop date and he basically says on chicken shop date like i would date you if you weren't like professionally single like i would go on that to her yeah to her he was like i would go on a date with you and i would date you outside of this if you weren't single professionally for your job and doing this all the time like i i think we should go on a date yeah you guys gotta the chemistry is it cannot be faked it is i understand he's an actor but it's yeah it's too much i like there are points where i had to look away because i was like this is private this is their private who was he dating like a doctor or something no one a doctor yeah she i mean he he used to date emma stone Years and years and years That's ago. That's right. Yeah. And she kind of has Emma Stone vibes. Kind of like silly, oh, funny. Oh, she does. Yeah. Uh-oh. It's a lot. It's a lot. Just, you guys got to watch it. It's so much. Um, wow. I'm pro them for sure. Leave Schreiber. This is from a tweet. Someone tweeted that they were at Whole Foods and Leave Schreiber spilled a jar of vodka sauce at the Whole Foods self-checkout and was very sorry and apologetic. And I just thought it was so funny. Just arcane celebrity news like that. I, well, like- that's, that's great. I love little tidbits like that. <laughs> Me too. And that is why I don't do self-checkout because I do something so fucked up every time. Oh, you I don't can't- do self-checkout? I would rather die than do self-checkout, honestly. Really? I only do it if, if I'm with my boyfriend and he helps me. Oh, I lo- I prefer self-checkout. Any oh. chance I get, I oh. love it. Oh, my God. I can never find the barcode. And then it's, then the thing beeps or someone has to help me. And it Oh, is, yeah. That is annoying when that happens. I, like, have a nervous breakdown. I would rather... I, I cannot do self-checkout. I can't do it. I will pull a leave Schreiber and spill a jar of vodka sauce um now this is from official sean penn she listed all the things that al pacino has been in the news for recently and it really made me laugh uh he has been in the news a lot lately yeah i'm like what is going on with this guy is is he in anything right now yeah he (laughs) just had a baby he did just have a baby and he's what like 80 years old or something 84 (laughs) that's so it's crazy insane. that his jizz still works and i, I feel know. like my eggs don't work and i'm that's like my up. eggs have like never worked and my, my it's, fucked up. yeah it's so <laughs> crazy well first he showed that he had a shrek phone case which was oh. wild <laughs> because he gave his phone to one of his kids and oh, it yeah. came back with a shrek phone case which is funny <laughs> but the first thing was uh this article al pacino will forever be haunted by injury to his penis such pain that I could hardly walk home. Such pain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Al Pacino was reflecting on an unpleasant childhood memory. The Oscar winner, 84, detailed an injury at age 10 in his new memoir, Sunny Boy. Oh, I guess maybe a it's because he's a out. memoir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he says, Pacino called the incident involving his penis one of the most embarrassing experiences of his life. I seem to cheat death on a regular basis. Why is he talking about childhood penis injuries in his memoir 
Um, I don't know. Trying okay. to trying to sell it. Yeah, I guess. It. Let's get into it. Okay, the story that leaves Pacino squeamish to tell now goes like this. I was walking on a thin iron fence doing my tightrope dance. It had been raining all morning, and sure enough, I slipped and fell, and the iron bar hit me directly between the legs. No. The, the author recounted being in such pain that I could hardly walk home. An older guy saw me groaning in the street, picked me up, and carried me to my aunt's apartment. Oh, my God. I lay there on the bed with my pants completely down around my ankles as the three women in my life, my mother, my aunt, and my grandmother poked and prodded at my penis in a semi-panic. No. (laughs) What? (laughs) Okay. All right, glad. No, wait, Al Pacino is one of the oldest fathers on record. What? He's in like the top 25 men in the world. The That's oldest fathers. really crazy. What the fuck? The oldest man is 101. Oh. Oh. That, so. Oh. Uh. So that means you, that person had sex with a 101 year old. I mean, how? Wow. How does that even? Whoa. Must be in great shape. I mean, or have tons of Viagra on hand. I mean, oh, how do you? Oh, yes. That's I mean, that's just crazy. crazy. His girlfriend was 20, or Al Pacino's girlfriend's 29. Girl. What are we doing? What are we doing? Listen, all the power to you, but I just don't. Ooh. I don't get it. Oh, Unless... Robert De Niro is on this list too. 79. Wow, all the greats. The, the Godfathers. It's just like, do you think they have a lot? Well, that leads Tony me to my Randall. other... That leads me to this. So he says Al Pacino doesn't live with his 16th month, 16 month son, Roman, but they text from time to time. (laughs) Texting with a 16 month old. (laughs) You can't. What? Al Pacino confirms. I know. I don't understand it. Al Pacino confirms he doesn't live with son Roman 16 months, but says he texts me from time to time. What do you mean? Oh, so are they already broken up? His his that twenty something year old? Oh, no, her name's Nor. Yeah, they're broken up. I guess. Oh no. Oh, ex girlfriend. Yeah. How so I guess what? that makes more sense. <laughs> we text from time to time. The little baby's just like <laughs> just texting. <laughs> I saw a funny. I saw a funny tweet. What was the dad's name from uh, Succession? Not Roman. Yeah, because the son is Roman. The son is but Roman. You got Sarah Snook. <laughs> dad from Succession. His his name on the show. Logan. Yeah. Logan. So, so someone was like, "Welcome back, Logan Roy." <laughs> oh. Because it was like, "Don't live together." Text with son Roman time to time. Just like, "Welcome That's back, Logan funny. Roy." That's yeah, it's funny. just crazy. Anyways, uh, go off, Al Pacino. Oh, yeah. So there is one more. It says, Al Pacino confirms there's nothing after we die. A near death experience left the author with a sacred knowledge sure Whoa. to ruin your plans for the great beyond. There's Whoa. nothing after we die. There's nothing there. Um, okay. How did he almost die? That's a. Okay. And oh. In 2020, roughly a year before the COVID-19 vaccine, Pacino contracted COVID, I guess. Oh. So before the vaccine, he said, I was sitting there in my house, dehydrated with a fever. I was gone. I didn't have a pulse. I didn't have a pulse. I had about six paramedics in that living room and there were two doctors and they had these outfits on that looked like they were from outer space or something. (laughs) Okay. 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 Um, he said, when you die, you died. Uh, I didn't see the white light or anything. There's nothing there. As Hamlet says, to be or not to be. The uncovered country from who's born, no traveler returns. Okay, I don't need to know Hamlet, you dumb bitch. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, he just says there is nothing. All right. Well, okay, cool. Thanks, okay, Mr. Well. Penis. I don't care. All right. Uh, 
TV. What are you watching in TV? Oh, okay. So we did an episode on that Grey's Anatomy writer who lied oh, about yes. having cancer. There's a whole little documentary about her on Peacock. Yeah, I think it was Peacock, yes. you said. It's called Anatomy of Lies. And it is worse than I remember it being. Oh, God. Like she met another woman, married her. That woman had five kids and that woman was in an abusive relationship and she was like lying to her about so much shit. And it it's crazy the shit she lied about. Like people oh, were God. at work like would treat her like, oh my God, she has cancer. Like we have to be nice to her. Like she would get extra time off. They would like make sure she had like any food she wanted, like different chair oh for God. her to sit in, like based all these episodes on her life and it was all a lie i have to watch it that is so crazy it's so crazy i cannot believe this it bitch, um, she's evil she's evil. yeah and where where is she now did it does it talk about what she's doing now she i mean she's not working in tv anymore she Good. posted on instagram this year a picture of her ex's kids and was like, I miss the, I miss being their mother every day of my life. Oh God. Like, ew. Don't, Yikes. Don't post yeah, don't the bring kids, that Some of the kids it. are in the documentary like, yeah, she's a horrible, evil person. No way. Yeah. Oh God. Okay, I gotta watch it. Yeah. Uh, next, Love is Blind. How I'm far on, did you get? I'm, I think I'm like, we're like three or four episodes in. Oh God. We're, it's, yeah, it's good. It's a it's a crazy season. Hannah yeah. is the devil, I think. She is so she you're not there yet. We have she's like we mean met and her. belittling. Yeah, you've met her. And Again, I won't she said some weird things, but nothing like crazy yet, but I I know it's yeah. coming. She I won't get into the full thing until you're done. Movies, what have you watched? Oh, so I saw The Substance. Thoughts. <laughs> I loved it so, so much. So fun, right? It's one of my favorite movies of the year. Yeah, it's the best. Demi Moore and Margaret Qualley go so... They commit so hard. I think oh, that's they commit hard, yeah. So good as they... Like, they really... They went for it. Yes. It is. It's gross, but it's gr it's like gory, but it's... Not in a way that, because I don't really like gore movies. It's comedic. It's like it's horror comedic. comedy. Yeah. I think that's what made it like, I didn't have to like look away. I wasn't like disgusted. I mean, it's disgusting, right. but it was, it's, they leaned into the comedy in the right place. It, like they really, yes. it's fantastic. It's just a like a time. fun movie. I yeah. remember I first started watching it being like, what the fuck is this? It and starts then, off weird. You're like, wait, what's going on? Why is it? And then it? by the end, I'm like, this is the best thing I've ever it's seen the, in my life. It's the best thing I've ever seen. It's, it's crazy. It's so fun. It's so good. And then uh, uh, Smile 2, which I already said. I and watched. you recommend? Highly recommend. It's funny because the preview didn't do it for me. I was kind of confused. I thought it was like, is this just influencers or something in uh, the movie? But Did you see it, the first one? I did see the first one and I really liked it. Um, yeah. So this one has like a plot line that's like. Yes, yes, yes. The main, okay. the, the the girl, the star, she's like a pop star. Yeah. And that's like kind of affects her. Okay. But she's great. She's really good. I right. enjoyed it. I um, and enjoyed it. Books. Oh, I read this very haunting novella Ooh. Ooh, okay. a novella, which is not a short story and it's not a novel it's a little bit in between but it is very haunting it is about a guy who dies he goes to hell oh, and shit. his hell is it's full of it's an infinite amount of books and you have to go through all of the books to find your quote unquote life story but it's I don't really want to explain any more than that without giving it away but it is it, it, it is horrifying if you are a fan of Stephen King's short story The Jaunt mm. which is kind of about where you go when you die you're gonna like this one let me tell you I always you. forget that you're a Stephen King head well I actually haven't read a lot of Stephen King Oh, I've 
I mean, I love the Langoliers. <laughs> made for TV. Yeah. I like a Stephen King. I actually haven't read much. No, big fan, I'm just though. kidding. I take it back. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that is it, it for this week. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for uh, joining our Patreon if you want our true crime episodes. I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. And that's all, folks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All the news you can handle, Bimbo So news. tune in to this channel, Bimbo News. Everything you want to know Bimbo about news. recent news and TV shows, Bimbo News. Powered by ACAST.